Welcome back, teacher friend. In today's episode, I'm going to share with you the micro school myth or the business myth or the teacher entrepreneur myth about what success really looks like and what it takes to reach the success that you're working so hard for or that you're dreaming about. I recently went to my daughter who's in high school. She's a freshman in high school. And I saw this poster on the wall and it just captivated me so deeply because I felt as if it reminded me so much of our community, of people who are really digging in and going against mainstream and looking for an alternative to teach, to educate, to create something new. And we all look at this iceberg and what may appear to be, you know, so successful and look at the hard work and you've reached full capacity. You're growing. Wow. I had someone actually, when I was at my daughter's open house, when I saw the iceberg success poster, someone came up to me and said, oh my gosh, I saw your email. She's on my email list for our school. And she said, I saw your email list and I'm so proud of you. My gosh, you you have 18 students. That's a school, Mackenzie. And I was like, oh gosh, thanks. You know, and we were celebrating for a minute. And then it just was very interesting that right after that conversation, I went straight into my daughter's high school biology class and I saw the success iceberg. You should look it up online, post it somewhere where you can see it. If you're not in our Facebook group, you can definitely find it there. If we're not friends on Facebook, friend me. You can go to my profile. I posted it there as well. Because after that conversation and I looked at that poster and I thought, man, on the outside or above the surface, it looks like a growing school, full enrollment, employees. Woohoo! And it is. And I'm grateful for it. I also know that there are people who wonder how you get there. And I know that there are people who are feeling as if they've stepped out and they're seeing slow progress. Some are seeing fast progress. It depends on where you are located out in the ocean, how cold the water is, how fast your iceberg is going to form. But there's always the above the surface and the below the surface. So in today's podcast, I'm going to really be honest with you and share the truth about how success has taken place and what truly lies beneath the surface of starting your own business, starting your own school, whether it be tutoring, whether it be a micro school, whether it be a private school, we have to be honest about the dedication and the below the surface characteristics that we have to embrace as entrepreneurs. Let's get into it. Welcome teacher to the Let Your Light Shine podcast. If you're searching for the freedom and permission to design the life you love as a teacher, you're in the right place. I'm on a mission to help teachers just like you build their own dream school or homeschooling business. In this present day, the world needs you, teacher friend, to step out in faith and give students an education they love and so deserve. In this podcast, I will teach you how to start a fulfilling and profitable homeschooling business that lights you up. I'm Mackenzie Oliver, former elementary teacher and instructional coach, gone homeschool teacher and business builder. I'm here to empower you to step outside the classroom and choose the experiences, the curriculum, and all the moments that put a smile on your face and your students. Does it seem like a dream? Well, it did to me until God opened the doors and made it reality. Together, we are breaking through fears and moving the crowd. So get out your notebook, sharpen your pencil. It's time to get your teach on. All right, everybody. I am just so thankful. If you're a part of our Facebook community, welcome again to the show. If you are brand new to the Teacher Let Your Light Shine podcast, we welcome you. We ask that you come into our Facebook group so we can support you, love on you, encourage you. We also have so many resources at teachersletyourlightshine.com. You can find many wonderful free resources about time management, finances, 
organization, starting your business, the eight steps to building your micro school, all of that is located on our website. Go there, peruse around, take what you need, email me, ask me questions, reach out to me. I would love to hear from you. And don't forget that if you are building a business or if you've already started and you need some refining, or maybe you are thinking about starting, but you know that you're pretty sure it's going to happen next year, you definitely want to head on over to teachersletyourlightshine.com slash shop so you can get all of your business bundle goodies, all of the business documents that you need to enroll students, to market through flyers and brochures, to have an introductory packet, to really show your value to families, enrollment forms, handbook contracts. They're all there for you, ready for you to plug and play, create them on your own, but at least you have a wonderful way to start. It's taken us years to get there. And so we've taken all of the heavy lifting off of your plate. You just need to go and see the visual, take the information and make it your own. So that is teachersletyourlightshine.com slash shop. If you're wondering about the resources, go into our community, ask questions about the resources, and everyone will be able to help you answer questions when it comes to starting your business and how you can get your message across, your value across, and get those students. Speaking of which, let's talk about this success iceberg. So there's this beautiful visual, and if you have time while I'm speaking, or if you just want to pause it, or after the show, or after the podcast, go look on Facebook, or Google, or wherever you would like to go look this at, Pinterest. Success is an iceberg, and on top of the water, you will see the big, beautiful, white iceberg, and what people see are the trophies, the Facebook page, the website, your school, You've stepped out the, you know, all the medals, the certificate. Maybe you've been teacher of the year. Maybe you've been a leader, an administrator. Everybody sees that part and they celebrate you and they're proud of you. Or some may be envious of you. Let's just keep it real. Some may be questioning what you're even doing. This is what people see. We don't have control over what they see. Because it's their own perception. Nor do we have control of what they don't see. And what they don't see lies beneath the surface of what actually has to take place in order for this success iceberg to fully develop. You know, success, as hopefully you know, and many have said, and unfortunately, I feel as if we look at success, myself included, as an overnight. We should just get it. You know, I've even, I've even felt that way in my own business. I should be so much further. Or I should be here or there. Or I should, ha- I should know this by now. I've been a teacher for umpteen years. Why can't I get my rotations underway? What is the struggle here? Why am I having to recreate the will so many times? Because success takes time. And it feels as if a lot of times you are floating alone in this deep icy water and it can feel lonely a lot of days. However, there's so much that has to take place inside of us beneath the surface of that iceberg in order for others or ourselves to see the 10% of the iceberg that is visible. Think about that. 10% of an iceberg is visible above the surface. And did you know that icebergs are also very old? Each year, the snow continues to build up on a glacier. It compresses it. It gets its own weight. It crashes into the ocean. The whole process can take up to, believe it or not, 10,000 years. Success is like an iceberg. But below the surface, there's so much going into building what's above the surface that not everyone sees, which is truthfully, I have to be honest with you, if you are wanting to step out and become an entrepreneur and you don't have any understanding or experience, you have to have someone standing beside you telling you the truth. And by the way, I think the best representation of this success iceberg is the one that has the visuals because you'll find a lot of these posters of the success iceberg, but it will be the poster that has just the words 
when I went into my daughter's biology class, they actually had pictures of what lies beneath the surface. And it just was such a great visual representation. Now let's take a closer look at what truly does lie beneath the surface. Dedication. You have to have a strong loyalty to this goal that you're trying to accomplish. You have to believe it so much that nothing and nobody, including yourself, can talk you out of it. And that's a really hard thing for each of us, especially whenever you feel doubt or if you've never seen this happen before, creating your own business, or maybe you have no body in your family or anyone around you who's stepped away from the system or corporate America to start their own business. You have to motivate yourself. Listen to people on YouTube. This is what I did years before I stepped out of the system. I developed myself so strongly in professional development, personal development, about becoming an entrepreneur, about being able to recreate something, about being able to create something of my own. And it still was painstakingly hard for me to step out and do something that I thought, I did I really hear this from God? Is this my own dream or is this really his dream? I mean, the questions, the doubts, the fear, the uncertainty, the uncertainty, it's, it's real. But I do have to say that if you have the willingness to give a lot of time and energy brainstorming and thinking and dreaming about this idea, then chances are you will be dedicated. But you do have to have a strong sense of dedication because the wind will blow. And the rain will come. And if you are not building yourself on a solid foundation of dedication, belief, motivation, prayer, it can all come crumbling down in your mindset, in your relationships. And I have to be honest with you about that because you have to know yourself that if this is something that you really want to pursue, stepping out, starting a new business, starting a new career, even just starting a side business, you have to be able to stand firm and stay dedicated, which also means that you do have to work hard. Now, I'm not saying you have to work so hard that you have to work your life away, but we are called to work. God calls us to work. This is a gift for us to the world to our families and to ourselves is to work. And yes, it is. it takes physical work, moving things, time, energy, mental work, emotional effort, focus, purpose, preparation. That is hard work. And I'm going to be honest with you. If you're not willing to put in the hard work in order for you to truly reach what you are deciding that you want to reach, Maybe you're still a little bit unsure, but you know that there's something you have to keep working towards it. And I'm not saying that you need to go to bed every night at midnight and wake up at three o'clock in the morning. That is not at all what I mean by hard work. Hard work, meaning that you are very diligent about your time, your resources, what you say yes to, what you say no to, what you dedicate your life to, how you spend your weekends. And I'm not saying you spend your weekends hustling and not being with your family, how you spend your nights. I'm not saying that, but what I am saying is that you will have to work hard at knowing when to say no, when to stop, when to go, what to let go of. And you will have to hold on to good habits, doing what you know you have to do, even when you don't want to do it. Like this morning, I did not want to go running. That is not my thing to do. I don't like it in the morning, but I know that it was good for me. And it's not a habit that I formed, but I knew that if I'm not going to be able to go anywhere in the afternoon because our weekends, I mean, I'm sorry, our afternoons are extremely busy, then I've got to do it in the morning. And it stinks and it's hard. And I was in a bad mood about it, but I still did it. And I'm not trying to get myself a gold medal because I'm just letting you know that that is not something that I enjoy doing. And it's not something that I do all the time, but I do know that it's good for me. And so I just have to put on my big girl pants, tie my shoes. And I was like, oh, I don't want to do this. But I was like, it doesn't matter, Mackenzie. You've got to tell your mind, your mind's going to tell you not to do it. But you've got to do it anyways. You have to talk yourself out of what you don't want to do because you know that's what you should be doing. And, and disappointment. I know there's so many people that are scared of disappointment, including myself. It's not always going to go the way that we think it should. You're going to have to rumble through some things. There are going to be times where you're going to hurt. There's going to be times where you're going to say, this is hard. 
what, what did I do? Why did I think this? Why did I think this idea was going to be easy? How did I think that I was just going to start a school and the kids were just going to automatically come? Oh my gosh. I, they, they, this, these parents called and, and they said that I'm too expensive. Now I, now I'm, now I'm worried that my price is, pricing is too high and I'm never going to get a student. Or my parents said that they didn't, that they didn't want full-time. They want a part-time. And that makes me think that nobody else wants my services. The disappointment, the disappointment, the dwelling on that disappointment really needs an adjustment of our attitude. And I will say, it wouldn't be honest to say that there isn't a part of a sacrifice. Of course there is. Now, this doesn't mean you have to sacrifice the greatest things of your life. And this is why you need to be very clear on your values and what you truly do value. Time with your family, then you don't sacrifice that. Saturdays of rest, you don't sacrifice that. Church, community, you don't sacrifice that. Going to bed early, you don't sacrifice that. But what can you sacrifice? Netflix, going out to eat three nights a week, spending extra money that you don't need to, an hour and a half each time that you could been that you could be using to generate an idea or generate income. And trust me, I'm raising my hand. I've done all of that too. And I'm not saying that you have to live a robotic life, but you do have to understand that there is sacrifice because you can't stay where you are and get where you want to go. You will have to give up something to get the success you desire. But I can tell you that what you give up is going to be so much better to gain what you're looking for, to gain what you're trying to build. And failure, you're going to have to embrace failure. You will fail. You will make mistakes. You will miss the mark. And you can either choose not to try or you can choose to give up, or you can choose and you can choose to cry. That's okay. You want to cry. I've cried. You can throw in the towel if you want to, but then what are you going to do? There have been times where I'm like, this is hard, honey, and I don't know if I'm going to make it. And I don't know, is this, should we do it in our house or not? I've got 18 kids in my house. You don't think I want to cry sometimes? I live in a very expensive city with tons of awesome schools around me. You don't think I've been intimidated? I have. You don't think that I've been wondering, God, why can't we find the property for this house? I live in the city. Of course, I want this beautiful two acre house with a barn in the back and kids running around everywhere and gardens and swings and play sets. I would love that, but I'm not there. And I cannot tell you how many times I have been on the brink of saying, I'm not where I am. I don't think I'm ever going to get there. What am I going to do? And my husband said, well, you can throw in the towel, but then what are you going to do? I'm like, I'm not going back to where I was. I can tell you that. And I don't want to start all over again. (laughs) I got to keep pressing on. The persistence part, continuing even when it gets tough. And so much of all of us want to give up because our world is really at a point where everything comes very easy. And if it's not easy, we make it even easier. We try to find ways to automate, to make it easy so we don't have to do anything. And really, it's causing us psychological debilitation because we don't want to put in the hard work sometimes. Amazon, click, don't have to go to the store. Order online, click, don't have to go anywhere. Come straight to my doorstep. So we have to really fight the good fight of faith, persistence, hard work, and focusing literally be zeroed in on what it is that you want to achieve and taking time and space to focus. Years ago, before the school was ever even built, my husband and I would wait till the kids went to bed and guess where we had to focus at? And I, you know, I, I, I tell you this, I hope it's not too much information. I said this on a couple other podcasts. I would take a bath and he would sit on the toilet right next to the bathtub and I would cry because I was so disappointed in school, but I, but I loved teaching And I just didn't know what direction I was going to go. And I wanted to have more kids. And I wanted to have my own school. But we lived in a condo at that time. And I just couldn't see how it was ever going to work. we It's so hard to find a place to live around here that was economically responsible on our part. And so we had to focus. And we had to to use what we called tub talks. Where I'd get into the bathtub, hot bath at the end of the night. Kids were asleep. My husband had a notebook. And we just sat there and brainstorm. Focus on the weekends where you can just... Find time for an hour, even if you need to go walk it out to figure it out. Time to focus. And also just being able to be flexible. Maintaining focus when your kids are calling you. Maintaining focus when your door's knocking. Maintaining focus 
but flexibly knowing that, okay, it's all right if I don't get it all done. It's okay if it's not perfect right now. It's okay if I don't have all the answers. Who can I call for help? Because that allows you to be consistent. Even when you don't see results immediately, you will have to keep going. Consistent, 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 consistent. Which means you'll have to dedicate yourself to managing your time. We have tons of resources about that on the teacherletyourlightshine.com website. Time management, being organized, staying healthy, exercising even when you don't want to do it, looking at your expenses, setting down, looking at your numbers, even whenever you've got a mountain of bills. Maybe you're in debt. Maybe you've got the mail just piled up. Start somewhere. It doesn't have to be perfect. Get out of debt. Focus on every single day, just something to move the needle forward. Be determined. Cry, like I said, if you need to, but get back up and keep going. Even if you feel rejected, you better believe I felt rejected. You know how many people have said no to Lighthouse Learning? It's okay. I'm stronger because of it. I'm better because of it. I'm not for everybody. And I'm glad I'm not for everybody. I'm not God. This isn't my world. And I don't want to be for everybody. That'd be a massive amount of responsibility. So, what are you going to do next? I want you to go find an image of the success iceberg. Print it out. Hang it up. Then go to www.teachersletyourlightshine.com Send me an email. Print off any resources. Get started on your business bundle. Look at the eight steps towards building your micro school and know that you might be at step one and it's okay, but you've got a whole team of people to help you, to encourage you, to help you float through the disappointments, float through the ideas Because it's so worth it in the end. It really is. It's like all the pain, the sacrifice, the hard moments, the getting up early to go run that, prepare to run that marathon. And then you cross the finish line and you're like, oh my God, thank you. And everyone looks at you and they're like, oh my God, you did it. That was awesome. But you're like, yeah, but you weren't with me for the past year as I was training for that marathon. Let's sweat tears, baby. All right, everyone. I look forward to hearing from you. Send me a message. I always enjoy hearing from you. Leave Teacher, let your light shine a review if you so feel moved to do it. I would greatly appreciate it. And I'll look forward to seeing you in our Facebook group. Hey, hey, teacher friend. Thanks so much for listening to today's show. I pray it inspired you, touched you, or challenged you in some way. Because we are making big shifts and using our teaching gifts for God's glory like never before. I'm so grateful for you. The number one way you can support this show is to leave a written review on Apple Podcasts and also share this with another teacher. Come join me in the virtual teacher's lounge known as the Teacher Let Your Light Shine Facebook group. Until next time, keep shining your teacher light. The world needs you.